Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Thank you for joining today. We want to see the blessings of Radha Mata, Radha Shamsundar. Radha Damuda, Krishna Balaram, Bhagavad Gopal, Shila Prabhupada, and the assembled devotees. So, we want to continue with Damuda Leela. Yesterday, we reached where the point where, although Yashoda managed to bind the Supreme Personality of Godhead to the wooden mortar with rope. Uh, this rope is, of course, uh, a rope of devotion, a rope of love. Nobody can bind the Lord otherwise. So this is uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 9th chapter, verses 19 to 21. Maharaj Parishit is this entire universe with its great exalted demigods like Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Lord Indra is under the control of the Supreme Personality God. Yet, the Supreme Lord has one transcendental attribute. Of course, he has more, but this one is the one that makes him uh, extremely sweet. He comes under the control of his devotees. This was now exhibited by Krishna in this pastime. So, one of the reasons why this pastime is celebrated throughout the month is because it shows the loving nature of the Supreme. He gives himself completely um, to his devotees. And that is just uh, the most amazing factor. And that's what distinguishes him from anybody else. Neither Lord Brahma, nor Lord Shiva, nor even the goddess of fortune, who is always the better half of the Supreme Lord. Interesting how um, Sukadev Goswami is referring to Lakshmi Devi as the better half, the Supreme. So neither they can obtain from the Supreme Personality Godhead, the deliverer from this world, such mercy as received by Mother Yashoda. So this is the unique nature of the Supreme Lord, the unique nature. <laughs> He's given it not to the exalted personalities who run the universe or even to Mother Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. He doesn't give it to them, but he gives it to his loving devotees, Yashoda Mai, who has no particular responsibility in this universe. Yet, because of her exalted love for the Supreme Lord, this defines her, really defines her. So, and we should also have this mood that, you know, we don't really want to become important people. That's by the by. What we want to become are devotees of the Lord. That is the most crucial um, thing to develop. Um, we don't want name or fame or position. What's the use? But if we have the um, mercy of the Lord, and that can only be obtained by having love for him, then that's, then our lives are successful. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, the son of Mother Yashoda, is accessible to devotees engaged in spontaneous loving service. But is not as easily accessible to mental speculators, to those striving for self-realization by severe austerities and penances, or those who consider the body the same as a self. So, uh, Sukadev Goswami is very categoric in his uh, description of who can attain the Lord. Who can attain the Lord? So, if we try to do great austerities or, or imagine the Lord, think about the Lord, or... Uh, Speculate about the Lord. It's not going to. It's not going to do it. Let alone somebody who's um, thinking that the body is the same as the self. <laughs> it's just not going to work. Anyway, very interesting. Oh, so Damodar is two years and two months old. Okay. Now, Ishoda my head. So we reached this point. She had been knotting ropes for hours. Although she decided to stop by the mercy of yoga maya. Her hand continued the momentum, so she tied one more knot. And that was a knot which bound Krishna. As soon as Krishna was bound, the hundred lengths of rope miraculously appeared and fell in a carpet around him. 
So all of that rope, it was there, but the Lord was not going to be tied down by that rope. He was tied down by the love. Seeing this, Yashoda Mai was bewildered. Looking more closely, she saw that Krishna's belly was now bound with the two original silken uh, um, rope that came from her, uh, plated hair, plated hair. Only those cords, the silken cords, could contain Krishna. All the other ropes for churning, etc., had been no, of no consequence. So this was the rope, this was the uh, silken cords that were in her hair. And that is what tied him up. She used that in the first place. But this is the inconceivable nature of the Lord. He can do, um, he can do anything he wants. Yashoda Mai now consciously tied together the two cords into another knot and then quickly tied one more knot, just in case. And she also checked that the knots, knots were still there. Mission accomplished. The transcendental thief has been caught and bound. <laughs> now she can move on to the next task at hand. She took the rope that had been tied to the mortar and connected it to the cord encircling Krishna's waist. Then she proceeded to give him one more telling off. I hope you will now learn your lesson and follow the saintly conduct of your father instead of the mischief of the monkeys. Krishna thought, here we go again. Reference to the monkey insult yet again. Yashodamai stood up and before turning to leave, she addressed Krishna. You will stay where you are until I clean up the chaos that you made. In the meantime, there will be no play, no toys. When I am done, then I shall come for you and we will go and see the Diwali celebrations. Do you understand? <laughs> so there was a little bit of um, a leeway given by Mother Yashoda. Yeah. All right, you've been naughty, you're not going to play, but okay, later on, we can go and see the celebrations. So this is showing the, this, the vast authority Mother Yashoda holds over Krishna through love. What does he do? Sheepishly, he lowers his head, feeling completely humiliated before his friends and whimpered, yes, mother. <laughs> this is the Supreme Personality who got it. Yashoda Mai embraced and repeatedly kissed his cheek, saying, you started this day off as a troublemaker, now finish it as a good boy. Telling his friends to stay there and keep an eye on Krishna, Yashoda Mai turned and with a victorious smile, invited her gopi friends to help her clear the mess in the house. Again, showing service to Krishna takes precedence. She could have just stayed with Krishna and enjoyed his company, kept on teasing him perhaps and enjoying his, um, you know, his baby-like mannerisms. But no, service to Krishna by cleaning up the house, the kitchen, was more important. So this is this is uh, actually exemplary, exemplary because sometimes we may want to sit in the temple and chant, or um, you know, listen to the kirtan or participate in the kirtan. But there may be other service more important that needs to be done. That has to be done. So we have to judge, and we will be given that guidance from within. And also from without, by the guru and the devotees. The remaining gopis, they teased Krishna. Oh, prince, now that you are bound, Dhamma, around your belly, Udar, you sh we shall call you Damudar. That, that's a bit of an insult. Right? <laughs> His friends joined in calling Krishna Damudar. And Krishna thought that is how everyone will now tease him. Insult to injury. As time passed and the Dhammada Lila became a fond memory, Krishna will treasure that name as one of his favorites. At present though, 
it sounded like an insult and he made his displeasure known with a frown on his sweet face. As soon as Ishodame left, Krishna cast aside his sad face and forced tears. He assumed a composed demeanor and filled the courtyard with the moonlight of his smile. Making the best of his predicament, he boasted to his friends, to see how I kept my mother at bay. <laughs> and the boys answered, it was a memorable exhibition. Now you're tied to the mortar. What will you do? So they were teasing him. Yeah, you kept your mother at bay, but now, what's your situation now, young man? Bound to the mortar. Krishna had still found ways to play with his friends. So these are friends who are pure devotees. They want to play with him as a child. These are the Gopas. They love Krishna more than anything. Remembering his predicament, Krishna's eyes would now and then well up with tears. Seeing this, the monkeys became increasingly excited and his friends lovingly tried to console him. Some boys tried to ease caution as embarrassing by offering him a snack. <laughs> Friend, would you like me to ask my mother for some yogurt? At the sound of the word yogurt, Krishna became aware of his hunger. The skirmish with his mother crossed the timeline of several meals during which he had not eaten anything, but he was still very sharp. Silly, your mother is at my home. Why bother her? Some of you should run to your home and see what is available. So this uh, the naughtiness doesn't go away. Is transcendental. In great happiness, the boys would run home and bring whatever was available and feed Krishna. In this way, they enjoyed a picnic. A picnic at any time, even when he's bound up um, to the wooden mortar. Then Krishna started to test the mortar. How heavy was it? He started another, uh, uh, he started pulling the mortar. To the applause of his friends, Krishna slowly dragged the mortar here and there, occasionally sitting down to catch his breath. Of course, this is nothing for him. But but um, he is a child. So he is behaving like a child. Although he's a supreme personality. Of God. So next verse, Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 9, 22. Um, Riyansh, are you there? Nani Ben, would you like to recite? Yes, Prabhuji. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.9.22 Krishna Stugraha Krutyeshu Vyadraya Matari Prabhu Adrakshir Arjuna Purvam Guhaya Kutana Datma Jau Translation While Mother Yashoda was very busy with household affairs, the Supreme Lord Krishna observed twin trees known as Yamla Arjuna, which in a former millennium had been the demigod sons of Kubera. Hare Krishna. Thank you. There he is pulling the motor. Hmm. I think we were here. My dear boy, your whimsical conduct has now come to an end. If you think you are so clever, then free yourself of this rope. Go ahead, pull the motor behind you and go wherever you like. So this was the mother's final, Yashodamaya's final words to him, which was still ringing in his e ear. She challenged him. Right, right. If you think you're so clever, free yourself of the rope. So, okay, he took on the challenge. He started moving the motor. To the delight of his friends, he was pulling the motor. But where would he go? Aware that his mother could easily hear the Gopas cheer. Krishna placed his finger to his lips to calm them. Then he remembered Narada's curse to the demigods. Recognizing the two stately Urdhjan trees, he decided to invoke his divine powers to liberate the demigods trapped in the trees. Krishna remembered the past lives of these demigods. So this is 10, 9, 23. Again, Nani, would you like to? Yeah. 
पूरा नारद शपेना वृक्षा तां प्रापिता मदा नल नल कुबेर मने ग्रीवाव इति ख्यातु श्रीयान विताऊ ट्रांसलेशन इन देयर फॉर्मर बर्थ दिस टू सन्स नोन एज नल कुबेर एंड मने ग्रीवा वर एक्सट्रीमली ओपुलेंट एंड फॉर्च्यूनेट but because of pride and false prestige they did not care about anyone and thus narad muni caused them to become trees thank you hari krishna hari krishna thank you nayan so they were the sons of kuber kuber is the treasure of the demigods the richest personality in this universe and they lived a carefree life of opulence and sense enjoyment these are the two sons of kuvera nalakuvera and manigriva unlike their father who dutifully managed the wealth of both demigods and men nalakuvera and manigriva squandered their time loitering in the chaitratha garden intoxicated in decorating themselves with jewels they enjoyed the company of young girls they were intoxicated not just by the varuni drink but also by false pride thinking themselves unconquerable as the sons of kuvera so this is one of the problems of material life one becomes um uh, falsely proud of oneself especially if one has some opulence around them either their wealth or their body or uh, their relatives or possessions and that false pride will be the uh undoing undoing of the people person and here the demigods there was the undoing of nalakuvera muni griva once they were enjoying the apsaras within the holy waters of ganga due to arrogance the demigods had abused the privilege granted them by lord shiva and committed the offense of using a sacred place for sense gratification without noticing narad muni suddenly appeared without notice so without notice he, he didn't tell anybody he just came he was absorbed in thoughts of krishna's childhood pastimes when the apsaras noticed narada they immediately covered the naked bodies and warned the demigods to do the same however the demigods were too intoxicated to hear or understand the warnings given by the girls to cover themselves narada thought hmm the pride of the two demigods need to be curbed so that they can become eligible for bhakti therefore i should will curse them so the devotee he actually doesn't curse of because of anger he curses because of compassion and that com- that curse is of course a blessing because it is there for uh, from the compassionate viewpoint not from the anger viewpoint if it's angry like durvasa muni he curses in anger that just leads to devastation but the devotee he curses in compassion and that leads to salvation although it was an offense on the part of narad to curse demigods yet he also wanted to give the opportunity to these two demigods to get direct vision of krishna narad expressed anger at the two demigods not just at their ignorance but also at their pride nalakuvera manigriva didn't seem to care remained proud indignant narad cursed them to become trees however narad wanted the demigods to advance spiritually so there they are enjoying and there's narad muni who's very angry therefore even in the bodies of trees you would he would allow them to be fully conscious of their past offenses remembered narad's teachings which he expressed to them for their spiritual upliftment this is the beauty of devotees no matter where they are who they are they simply preach <laughs> be aware of their surroundings this was unlike normal trees in this way they progress their the progress to spiritual devotion would be unimpeded narad muni thought i cannot give them a curse that will result in bhakti that does not result in bhakti so he will give them a curse that results in bhakti when the demigods heard the curse in one sense they were relieved as it could have been worse narad muni could have cursed them to become demons however they made one request oh lord your punishment is suitable however if we must be trees please allow us to take birth in the holy land of bindavan 
by drinking Yamuna water, by standing in Vraj's soil, and by being in the company of desire trees, we will obtain the seed of pure devotion. Narada was pleased. He completed the curse by informing the dev demigods that Krishna was to appear on earth after 20,000 years. They would stand in the courtyard of his father's residence, Nan Maharaj's garden. After witnessing Krishna's pastimes as an infant, the Lord would personally deliver them from the curse. Before the Apsara's unbelieving eyes, Nalakuvera and Manigriva disappeared from Kailash and appeared in a far away Gokul at, as twin saplings. Narada turned towards the Apsaras who were motionless in fear of also being cursed, but Narada simply gave them a warning glance. Although they had behaved indecently, they had shown shame and remorse. Their witness, the activities of Narada and the seed of devotion was planted in their hearts. Eventually they would excel as Vaishnavis amongst celestials. So even in the heavens, bhakti is not so easy to attain. Because there's so much enjoyment there, sense enjoyment. It's very easy to forget devotion. But these Apsaras, they were exposed to Narad Muni's teachings. And the teachings are so potent, especially from the great souls like Narad Muni, that even they changed their mood. So they became Vishnavis. Narad was on the way to Vaikuntha to see Lord Vishnu, but having cursed devotees of Lord Shiva, he decided instead to go to Badrikaksham and disclose his heart and mind to Narad Narayan Rishi. Having relieved, 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 relived, relived the history of how the two demigods came to become trees in Goku, Krishna knew that the initiative was his. Narad had promised the demigods that the Lord would free them from the curse, from his curse. And Krishna, duty-bound to keep the promise of his devotees, would act according to Narada's will, he thought. Narada is very dear to me. For his sake, I will free the demigods, bless them with supreme devotion and send them back to their abode. So this is only the mercy of the devotee. So that's why we also seek the the mercy of the guru, the devotees, the bridge-bahasis, because of them, Krishna will kindly look uh, upon us with some affection. Otherwise, what chance have we got? Leaning forward, Damudar began to slowly crawl on his hands and knees. His friends watched. They were like spellbound audience of a drama, too enthralled to move or speak. So they were watching all of this, the demigods uh, being freed or the trees being felled. Oh no, that hasn't happened yet, hasn't happened yet. So, so sometimes Damuda pulled the mortar, sometimes the mortar moved on its own. Both the rope and mortar were spiritual forms and could act according to their own will, but both wanted to serve Krishna in their own way. Slowly, the distance between Damuda and the trees was closing. Intently gazing at his destination, Damuda took another few effortless steps. While the mortar positioned itself between the two trees, for the first time since they had appeared, the demigods felt the touch of the Supreme Lord Why the conduit of the rope and the mortar, and they shivered in ecstasy. The gopas were still up the hill, chatting, joking, fully enjoying Damuda's adventures. The two trees felt an intolerable pressure leaning against them. Then gradually, gracefully, the stately Jurjan trees were uprooted as the trees fell. Their branches and trunks did not touch Dhammudara. The sound created was terrible. The first sound was the crack of the trees being uprooted. And the second was the crash of their hitting the ground. The sound was so loud it caused the airiness of Gokul to faint in shock. Only Krishna's friends were unaffected, covering their ears with their hands. So they continued to sit where they were, calm and fearless. When they tried to stand in order to help Krishna, they were unable to. Yoga Maya had immobilized them. Krishna needed some time alone to deliver Nalakuvera and Manigriva. Thus the boys remained curiously immobile but able to cast wandering glasses at each other. 
Krishna stood between the two fallen trees and laughed just to show his immense progress to the Gopas. So he was very proud of his achievement. The thin rope for churning yogurt assumed such strength by the Lord's mercy. So this is another example for us. We are on our own. What are we? We're absolutely rubbish, useless. But when we engage in the service of the Lord, all of the potency of the Lord comes to support the Seva. Because that's Bhakti. That's Radha Rani. This is the power of Bhakti. When we engage in Bhakti, like Guru Maharaj, he used to have, um, uh, you know, terrible pains and you know, uh, his his body was, um, you know, always so uh, there was something, some problem. But when he'd give class, it is this. Uh, it was as if he was the fittest man on earth. <laughs> you couldn't tell that this is a heart patient who had a quadruple bypass operation. He had so many other ailments, but you couldn't tell because he was when he was in service. Krishna allowed that service to continue unhindered and gave him the strength and potency to continue um, to engage in that service. So even this little thin rope was able to fell the tree. <laughs> okay, so let's stop there. Uh, carry on to, uh, we'll carry on on Monday now. So any questions, any comments? Hey, thank you everybody. So, Rata Damodar Kijay, Ishida Damodar Kijay.